Hi, good morning everybody to this very important and interesting session in the My Data Online meetings where we're focusing on smart cities, uh, a, a key and important to topic that's very close to my heart. Uh, my data is playing a really important role um, in smart cities because cities are very concerned to make sure that their citizens are in control of the data about themselves and are able to decide themselves how their data can be used to benefit themselves and the wider community. And the work that my data is doing is hugely important to that. And particularly because now as we move towards data spaces um, and the, the way that the new way that data could be managed within a city or between different sectors to allow data sharing without needing to put all of that data into a, 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 data, a common data lake, but allowing each agency to be in charge of its data, but to enable that to be shared for mutual benefit. Uh, my data, of course, is a, a key player in the uh, data spaces support center. And our open and agile smart cities that I represent um, is going to be drawing heavily on the work of my data to make sure that the data spaces for smart cities are developed in a way that provides the governance and the standards to enable citizen data to be managed well in cities. So this is a, a great subject this morning. We've got two excellent speakers. Uh, we've got Tuck, who is going to provide us with a really good overview of the work in Japan, how the Japanese government and nationally are, are um, providing some focused uh, policy uh, initiatives and support to enable uh, cities to develop in a more human-centered way within, city, within Japan, and, and how we can learn from that in the rest of the world. And then Miriam is going to share with us a particular really good example of energy management and, and how the citizen can be in charge of that very important aspect of our lives in the cities. So I'm looking forward to really to really good talks and I'm hoping that we're going to get some very insightful questions from you using the Q&A chat so that we can get some good discussion and we can make sure we learn the, the, the best from the expertise of our two speakers. So I'd like now to hand over to Tak um, and looking forward very much to hearing uh, the information that you're going to share with us. Thank you. Hi, uh, hi everyone. Thank you, Michael, for a kind introduction and I'm happy to be with you right now. Let me uh, share my slides in seconds so I can talk about what's going on in Japanese context. All right. All right, here you go. So let me talk about what's happening in Japanese smart city context. Uh, most recently for the year so forth. The first of all about myself, I'm the uh, executive managing director at Smart City Institute Japan, uh, also a member of the Open and Agile Smart Cities in Japan. And uh, I also uh, represent some of the national government uh, councils uh, related to smart cities, such as regulatory reform council, and then uh, some of the uh, committees at the digital agencies in Japan. And I also uh, have uh, positions at the academics as well, all related to smart cities. And uh, the story begins about the two, three years ago when the pandemic attacked us. Uh, we are working for smart cities more than decades, just like many of the European countries. And uh, COVID-19 accelerated our implementation of the smart cities. And as you can see in, on this uh, schematics, uh, we have you know, uh, extensive implementation of smart cities across Japan. We are targeting 100 locations to be smart cities by 2025. And uh, counting backwards from the national population size, we'll have probably 200 to 250 smart cities after that period. And the most important development for the past year in Japan is the establishment of the digital agency Japan, uh, which uh, was the uh, September last year, uh, based upon our painful experience uh, during the pandemic. We tried to uh, deliver cash handouts to all populations, but wasn't really easy 
because of the disconnect between national government system and local government systems. Many of the systems are、uh, created in silo,、uh, vendor locked in situation, thereby the、uh, council members of the cities have to go to the office to do some manual work to deliver cash to the citizens. So, based on that、uh, painful experiences, we created a cutting across type of organization,、uh, digital agency, to take care of the、uh, digital transformation of the、uh, government sectors. And the、uh, most important activities uh, uh, the digital agency is focusing on is standardization of information systems across. Local governments, as I said, the、uh, local systems in local governments were all different. One by one, it's all different. So we have to have more concerted action to、uh, synchronize the local government systems. Thereby,、uh, when we need to do, let's say, the cash handouts, everything will be all connected、uh, smoothly. And、uh, together with this idea. What we are now focusing on is the、uh, implementation of the digital ID.、Uh, as compared to, let's say, Estonia, which has already implemented 99% of population have the digital ID, we are around the、uh, just about 50% of the population owns so-called my number card, is the digital ID card. So I think we will take a few more years to complete the all,、uh, full range of the penetration. But this is going to be the baseline for our digital transformation. And、uh, on the context of the smart cities, we are now implementing digital garden city initiative with some、um, subsidies from the national government.、Uh, which is to say,、uh, we will combine the effort to revitalize the regions of Japan and the transformation, digital transformation of entire nation.、Uh, reason was simple. We have been、uh, too much focused on the、uh, Tokyo as the most concentrated city of everything:、uh, economy, business, politics, academia. Everything was concentrated in Japan. But when the pandemic attacked, you know,、uh, it was、uh, emerged as a risk. Once the、uh, egg is broken in Tokyo, then everything collapsed. So we decided to disseminate, decentralize the、uh, use of the national land. So once, even if the Tokyo is down, other major cities are up and running. So revitalization of the uh, uh, regions, local areas, is so important, particularly when the population is decreasing and aging.、Uh, the weakening of the nation comes from the regions. So we are now balancing the、uh, Tokyo and the other regions in Japan. And the、uh, most important development in Japan with regard to the digital garden city initiatives, which is based upon the philosophy of the Society 5.0,、uh, 5.0 idea is actually focusing on human centricity, like any other European countries. And、uh, we have been talking about the technology dreams for the past decades or so forth. On this、uh, schematics. We were narrowly focused on the two layers in the middle, digital layer and the social infrastructure layer. I didn't pay attention to the impact of the digital transformation to human and society layer. And we are coming back to the、uh, fun fundamental ideas. So, what does technology trans、uh, digital transformation mean to human and society? And then, as a result, we decide to implement something very important. Uh, livable well-being city indicators.、Uh, livability indicators have been implemented in many、uh, countries, some in Europe, some in Australia, and other countries like Singapore or India. The well-being idea was something we learned from actually European countries, particularly the Nordic countries, and we combined the、uh, subjective well-being surveys and also open database,、uh, objective data assessment, which are、uh, They are、uh, similar to、uh, Australian livability indicators. You can see on this chart. You can see the three layers below the well-being、uh, assessment. Well-being is a single question:、uh, How happy are you、uh, on the scale of zero to ten? And then the factors influencing well-being 
will be measured in three layers, the mind factors, activity factors, and environmental factors. The top two layers, mind factors, activity factors, are mostly the uh, subjective well-being related uh, survey. We conducted survey at the uh, national level. Uh, more than uh, 34,000 uh, uh, sample are collected back. So we are now statistically analyzing the result. The livability indicator part is the objective indicator based on the open data from the public sector. The, we made the dashboard. This is a part of the dashboard. I cut and pasted on the PowerPoint. And uh, the well-being of local life index, the interdependent well-being, which is uh, you know the uh, uh, well-being related to the community, not only about you, but people around you. And since your city is how you sense about the cities you live in. And this is uh, visible for each of the uh, municipalities. We have uh, 1,700 uh, municipalities in Japan. And this is available to all 1,700 municipalities. So you can see where you have a strength and weakness in, uh, the, from the well-being standpoint. This is the uh, environmental factors. Uh, based upon the open data. Just like uh, the subject of well-being, we created a spider chart, as you can see on the right-hand side, the cities by city by city. So city can see where they have attractiveness, where they have a weakness, where they have opportunity, so forth, based upon this analysis. Again, this is available for all 1,700 municipalities. And based upon this subjective and objective data assessment, cities can choose which policies should be uh, able to uh, uh, sh uh, affect the well-being and the livability of the citizens. So before that, we didn't really have evidence, but now we have evidence where we should implement the digital transformation. The key idea, this is the last slide, is that goal is to implement, enhance, well-being and the livability of citizens, as you can see top of this uh, schematics. And you can see on the below half, the means is the implementation of the smart cities, which usually, as any of the European countries, consisted of public, private, and academic people partnership, and uh, this is a transformation in self-help, mutual help, and public health. And uh, enablers are the business model creation, talent development, and most importantly, regulatory reform for the countries with a lot of the old regimes uh, still prevalent in Japan. All right, so uh, you can see as a conclusion, uh, we are not talking too much about the technology, but coming back to the human centricity ideas to implement the smart cities, more than 100 locations across Japan. That's all from me. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much indeed, Tuck. Um, it's very interesting and I suppose to be expected to see that the logical way that Japan is working through the uh, the, the achievement of uh, of making sure that it's a human centered uh, uh, society, a human uh, that, that technology is supporting, you know, human, human well-being and so on. And, and what I like very much is the idea of of having these clear um, uh, KPIs, if you like, or, or, or ways of measuring a whole set of different indicators that then show where the city is strong and where it needs to focus more, and then having a clear set of policies that the city can then draw on, understanding where it needs to focus to ensure that it's providing a rounded uh, set of, uh, of, of um, policies and, and um, uh, processes and that to support the citizen. Um, how how um, I could see that some of the data is personal data, effectively. It's about acti activities and so on. Presumably, that's aggregated. And is that something that's um, that's done automatically, or is that something that citizens have to uh, opt into? Right. So the survey doesn't require require. Uh, inputting names or you know any private information, except for the gender and the age group, and also the zip code number. 
And uh, you know, mm-hmm. based on that, we aggregate as a cluster, geographical clusters in the city. So cluster by cluster and age by age, gender by gender, we can see the survey result, but no more than that. So we are keeping right set of information, keeping <laughs> the privacy of the citizens out of the, this survey. Good. So that, 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 that's, that's, that's really useful to know. Thanks very much. Now, um, uh, we've already been reminded um, in, the, in the chat that um, please think of your own questions uh, because this is not just a discussion between the three of us on the stage here. This, this is meant to be an opportunity for all of us to ask questions and so on. So there is this Q&A uh, channel. Um, please feel free to use that to um, to post any questions you have uh, to talk to, so that uh, and to Miriam later on, so that we can really get some good discussion and dialogue going. Uh, what do you think are the main challenges, uh, uh, Tuck, in 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 taking this whole process forward? You've got a hundred pilots, as, as far as I understand it. What are the main challenges that you need to overcome to make this fully successful? Right. So, you know, we are targeting 100 smart cities by 2025, uh, uh, 20, uh, yes. But uh, we started with the 27 uh, top-notch selected cities to implement these indicators, which is coupled with the subsidies with the, from the national government. In turn, meaning uh, once the 27 cities got the money from the national government, they have to implement this uh, well-being indicators. And... Uh, Sharing this idea necessitates a lot of workshops with the citizens. Just uh, actually, I'm in mean, one of the uh, workshop sites today and just escaped from the workshop and attending this session. So sharing the key philosophy, let them exercise what they think of well-being by themselves, and then hook up to the policy making. This takes a lot of time. So I think it will take a year or two to come up with a good practice head to head, you know, head to the end, I would say. So, you know, time consuming, that's, I think, is the challenging part. Uh, and what kind of citizens are you, how do you choose the citizens to have these these groups? Um, yeah. How, how are you making sure that it's representative uh, and so on? Yes. <laughs> yeah, this is like an onion, you know, starting from the center, the core part of the onion, the first uh, workshop will be held, held with the uh, city council members. So key people, you know, in the governmental sector. Mm. And then we expand it to the more people, you know, supporting the uh, local business, local business executives. And then we expand it to not-for-profit organizations supporting city. So, you know, we are taking phases to expand the audience to outer rim. And uh, at the end, we share everything online with the citizens. You know, the, the way we conduct the workshop will be available on YouTube and the city communication paper, so forth. So, you know, it, you know, this is a stage-based approach. Mm. And uh, are you saying that at the moment you're, you're just beginning that process or how far along this process are you at? You're still at the core of the onion. Yeah, I think we are at the second or third layer right now. Okay. We began this journey uh, before the summer. So the first set of the uh, workshop with this uh, council member has been done. And then we are now inviting the Chamber of Commerce people and the not-for-profit organization. Just today, I'm doing it right now. So, you know, <laughs> we are at the second or third yes. stage. Yeah. Perfect. And, and this has been done in parallel by all of the 27... Uh, yeah regions yeah. that have received the funding yes yeah. and uh, and then are you aggregating the results to try and gain insight and learning or ha- how does that work right so data sets uh from the survey are placed in one pool which i am managing so statistical analysis can be done in one mm-hmm. place and the result will be available on site on website so everyone can share the, the result and uh, also the practice of the uh, workshops are summarized as a case studies, use case, and then also posted on the website so everyone can take a look at it. So it's, you know, expand, collect the information, expand to everyone. That's the kind of uh, process mm-hmm. we'll be taking. I, I, I mean, it, 
one of the great things here is is that you've got not only a systematic approach but this transparency part yes. which, which sounds really good excellent so uh, we have we have a question here um uh from Dixon uh, Sue for smart city pilots what are the things you Tuck have to improvise for Japan citizens for example to adjust cultural differences yeah good point the each time I need to customize the tone of the communication. Let's say when I'm talking to uh, city council members, I need to focus on the policy. So then I can talk in a more strict way. But when I'm talking to citizens at large, I'm not using the technical term to the extent possible. If you say two difficult words, people feel like, ah, forget about it, right? <laughs> so, you know, I would say, so for you, what's most important in your life? You know, how can we improve your sense of well-being or happiness. So we begin with something that people can understand. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. It, how are people responding? Um, so far, you've had these two or three uh, uh, stages. W what kind of response are you getting from the participants? Yeah, let's talk about, first of all, the city council members. They actually look at their you know, city long-term plan you see if their plan is hooked up to the sense of well-being in a logical manner. And the result is, each time I talk to that kind of stuff to the uh, city council members, okay, I have a lot of information in the city plan, but there is no logical connection to sense of well-being. So we have to reconfigure the plan from scratch. You know, you have pieces, but you know the way you constructed the plan Heading to the uh, sense of well-being was missing. That's a you know, typical response. When I talk to the yeah. citizens, citizens actually love workshops. You know, having together <laughs> talk about you know sense of life. You know what you talked about uh, to to your wife over the dinner, and uh, you know how you enjoy the local foods. You know what's your dream. Those are you know fun to talk about. So, you know, uh, depending upon who you talk to, the responses are different. Mm -hmm. I can imagine, indeed. There's a question about the age gap here uh, from Juliana. Um, she says, is there any age gap when Japanese use smart cities technology? This is, I guess, going back to that, since the younger might be faster to adopt, ad uh, adapt it. And I guess that really links also with, you know, the whole issue of, of technology and well-being, um, how to make sure that everybody all the different age groups and other demographics benefit. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. So when we conduct the uh, subjective well-being survey, the elderly people are happy to answer on a paper basis, right? You send out the, the survey in the postal office, they put it on the paper and send it us back. And the younger people would like to do the digital, right? So there's a difference between the age groups, largely the younger and the elderly. Uh, uh, in terms of the, how they respond to the survey. And uh, today we're running something called Dissident. It's an online-based decision-making um, uh, toolkit created in Barcelona. I think the uh, uh, cities in Helsinki or other cities are also using. Youngsters are you know, quick to master how to use login and answer the question, you know, put the comments on that. The, the, you know, people over 40, 50 are kind of starting at first, learning from the younger people sitting next to him. So, you know, there's a commu communication supporting each other. So it's a mutual mm. learning process, in, you know, when it comes to the system usage. But as you're right, there's a gap between young and old uh, upon the use of the technology. And does that provide any challenges in terms of, of bringing the data together, given that it's somehow been inputted from different in different ways, to come up with a good balanced overview. Well, the data aggregation is always a challenge. Let's say uh, when I talk about the survey, you really have to balance the age groups, geographical distribution, the data format. So you know, we were uh, we have done those kind of things before conducting the survey. So, so far it's been okay. But I you know we are now recommending each city to run their own survey modeled after our national model. So there will be some sort of digress from the templates, national model. 
So when it comes to the aggregation of you know, local survey results, I may face some challenges as well. well I'm expecting that already. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent. So, so um, let me just see if I can. There's one more, one more question, and then um, and and then we can we'll be able to move on to Miriam and see what time there is at the end for any joint uh, discussion. So the final question is, um, how can the my data help you to persuade all stakeholders to take part in this? Mm, that's a great question. First of all, we need to get the consensus around who owns the data, right? So there's a vague understanding about ownership of the data. The principle of my data is that the data is owned by citizens, you, right? So after conducting survey and talk about how we can tran digitally transform the society, we need to go back to the data ownership issue. And then there's a, okay, there's, here's a philosophy coming from my data. You can learn from it. This is already prevalent in European countries and so forth. We can take the same action. Okay, so that's what, that's how I think the uh, my data principle will mm. help us in Japan. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so, is there anywhere um, where we can find out more? Obviously, um, the presentation will be shared um, and available after this. But is there yeah. anywhere else we can go to to get more information about this whole process? Yeah, I, I will put that on the, the, the chat later, but uh, you can visit Smart City Institute Japan's website. Everything is in, in Japanese, but you can trans Google Translate. <laughs> yeah, if you understand what it means. Yes. Mm. Well, it would be wonderful if, if there could be a way of making it uh, properly into English, because it sounds like there's a great deal we can learn from what you're doing in Japan. Right. Thank you so, very much indeed. Yeah. Yeah. All the questionnaires are available in English too, so I can send out whoever okay. wishes to receive it. Okay. Well, let, let, let's talk after and, and see how we can uh, really benefit from all the detailed work that you're doing. So now we're moving. We've had, if you like, a big picture um, presentation looking at a national uh, initiative, uh, which is using data effectively to help uh, focus action on uh, building citizen well-being and now we're going to focus down into one particular issue which is about energy and a use case of how um, citizens can be in charge of of, of how their their data can be used um, effectively and so we're going to turn to you um, Miriam um, if I can hand over you to take us through your presentation and we're keeping our fingers crossed that the technology will work thank you yes thank you um... I've had a bit of a problem today with sound, so we managed to find uh, an adequate way for me to talk to you and for uh, me to hear you at the end of the at the end of my presentation. I am uploading my presentation at the moment. Uh, I hope I see it's loading, and here we go. Okay. So um, my presentation is a bit, uh, is a lot like smaller in scale than uh, tax was. Uh, so for like, first I'm uh, Miriam Jegat, so I'm a project manager at the Metropole de Lyon. Uh, and I have been working on self data for the past year with Ines Leal, for those who of you who know her, um, I've been told uh, that uh, a lot of you have already heard about Ecolio, um, so I will try to be uh, to be um, on point and quick about certain points. So don't hesitate to um, at the end ask questions uh, or uh, put questions in the Q and A um, chat so that I can answer your question after the presentation. So, uh, Ecolio is a tool developed uh, by the Metropole de Lyon uh, and Cozy Cloud. Uh, it helps citizens follow through, uh, follow their energy consumption of water, gas, and electricity all in one place. Um, for example, in the middle of the screen, you can uh, see my consumption of electricity and water combined 
for the month of October uh, compared to the month of September for the days uh, available. Uh, because I took that, that screenshot on uh, Monday 10th of October, so you don't have uh, all the data uh, for this month. Um, in uh, Ecolio, you can see gas, electricity and water. For my consumption, I do, I do not use gas at home, so I only have the aggregated data for electricity and water. Uh, on the um, Ecolio also en engages the public with little games and quizzes uh, that help you learn more about uh, more information about energy and its impact on the environment, uh, as well as help you try to uh, lower your consumption with uh, time challenges or with small things and advice about what you can do around your house. Um, so you can see the examples on the side of the screen. On the left, you have a challenge uh, that uh, tries to um, challenge you to consume less electricity. And on the right, you have uh, an example of an, uh, of an action you can do at home to reduce your daily consumption. Um, right now, we are working on a new version of Ecolio with a simpler way of connecting to the electricity supplier, uh, which should be ready shortly. The connector that we are using right now uh, is a bit complex, and the feedback from the better users, from the better testers, um, have told us that um, the complexity of that connector is a bit of a hindrance on the use of Ecolio, so we are working right now on developments that should help with that uh, in order to get more people to use Ecolio. Uh, so we are trying to simplify that. Um, energy is a hot topic right now and has been even more scrutinized in the past few weeks, months, as winter is approaching and the war in Ukraine is ongoing. Uh, with, the, with the effects that we know on Europe's energy availability in the next year or two. Um, so, yeah, it has been uh, more uh, politically charged lately. Um, our goal is to launch a large-scale campaign at the very start of next year uh, with the efforts to contain energy consumption in France. Um, well, for now, in Lyon, but like um, the, the, the effort is national and we are trying with Ecolio to help with that on, uh, our, on our territory, on, on our scale. Um, we have not had a large-scale campaign so far, so we only have a few hundred users um, at the moment. Hopefully, we will get into the, the, thou the thousands uh, at the start of next year. Um, as I said, it's a, it is a politically charged moment, so hopefully all goes well and people are interested by the concept and give us feedback uh, so we can learn and improve. Uh, a new feature that has already been asked for, for example, is the availability, the possibility to follow the consumption of two places at once. For example, uh, people who live in an apartment uh, and additionally have a private charge point for their uh, electric car or vehicle, or for people who have uh, a secondary home, um, that's something that the, the feedback from testers have let us know that they would like to be able to follow uh, the consumption of two places at once. Uh, on a larger scale, when it comes to self-data as a whole, um, we are hoping to get uh, selected in a multi-million call for projects launched by the French government at the start of next year as well, uh, which would enable us to develop Ecolio and other self-data-based products such as this one. Um, Okay. Um, in order to improve Ecolio and prove that it has the positive impact we hope that it has, uh, we need feedback from users. Our main source at the moment are the beta testers. Uh, we have a few hundred of those so far, like I said. Uh, they help us by allowing us to follow their use of Ecolio via a back office that lets us see the aggregated data, which is completely anonymous, of course. 
we have no way of picking one user and identifying who it might be. The beta testers have also been invited to answer short surveys at different points of the development of Ecovio, which is partly why we are working at a new and easier way to collect um, the electricity information. Um, I'm going to show you a short video um, that just takes you through Ecolio as it is today. So let's do this if I can make it work. Yes, there it is. So here, the short video that shows you the different parts of Ecolio as it is today. Uh, first, what we call the multi-fluid board that shows you your consumption of electricity, water and gas in one place, in one board. So this is my Ecolio, and like I said, I don't use gas at home, so you will only see electricity and water information in this short clip. Uh, you can choose one day, one week, a month, a year that you want to focus on and compare it with the previous ones. Um, and you can do that for your electricity consumption as well as the two other fluids, water and gas. Um, on the top of the screen, you can see which fluid you are looking at. Right now it's electricity, now water. Um, and the estimated price of your consumption that day, uh, as well as the liters, like for water, this is um, counted in liters uh, to see how, you, how much you consumed on that day and how much you consumed on that day the month before. That's the gas that I don't have. And then we go on to the more gamified part of Ecolio, where you can start small challenges when you answer questions. You're invited to go explore the app and try to take on challenges to reduce your energy consumption uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. You also have a board of little things you can do around your home to try and reduce your consumption. Um, if you click on them, you get a small description of what you can do. Oh, it has stopped. Sorry. Wait. There you go. Okay, it's back on. Um, I'm going to maybe try. Wait. So here you have uh, another board where you get the aggregated data presented a bit differently with the estimated price of your consumption uh, for the previous month, uh, the day on which you consume the most energy, uh, a board where you can compare your consumption with the median consumption of people who have a similar family size, uh, and you get information explaining how the different pages work. You can see and update uh, your profile, the consent forms, and I think it has crashed. <laughs> I'm going to try to um, go back to the... I'm going to stop this and then start again. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, share, sharing the screen. I'm sorry, I'm going back to it. Of course, it worked perfectly the few times I tried, and it doesn't work when I actually have to show it. Give me one more second. And here we are. Okay. It should be loading again. Yes, good. Okay. Sorry about that. And here we go. Okay. Okay. It's working again. So yeah, that's the, the, the board, the second board where you can see a consumption. It's, uh, it's a different way to show it. Uh, on my board, you can only see, like I said, water and electricity and it's bugging again. No, it's okay. Um, so yeah, you can, like I said, you can update your profile, uh, your consent forms, you can, uh, you can also set um, an alert telling you when you go over th a certain threshold. 
concern, concerning your water consumption. Uh, it's been created to alert to water leaks mainly. Here you can see my uh, info. Um, and you can, of course, revoke your consent at any point uh, when using Ecolio. It's just that you won't get uh, the, the full experience if you, if you revoke your consent because we do need um, your consent so that we can uh, get the, the information about electricity, water, etc. Um, without that, you will not get um, all the information that you could. And that's it. So if you have any question for me, um, I'm here to uh, listen. I'm going to put that back on so that I can, I can hear Michael and uh, everyone. Okay. Okay, um, I can't hear anyone. Uh, yeah, I can hear you, Julia. That's, sorry, that, that was my fault. I was muted. Too enthusiastic. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me, Mariam? I'm sorry, Michael. I can't hear you. I think Julia is working to uh, get me to hear you. Okay. Oh, okay. The, the, Okay. Uh, she cannot hear you either, Michael, apparently. Oh. Well. Um, maybe I can answer the, the questions I see in that, the Q&A section. Yes, that's good. That's good. Yeah. I can hear you, Michael. Okay, great. Yes. <laughs> that, I, I was going to ask you that same question. So if you could uh, answer it, that would be brilliant. Yes. Um, so the, the way we collect data usage in real time uh, is that um, it's the work of the connectors. We have three connectors, one for gas, one, one for water, one for electricity. The electricity and gas ones are uh, national providers. So technically it would work, um, it would work uh, outside of Lyon. For now it, it works in Lyon, but it, it would work outside of it as well. Um, and the water one is uh, purely like the, the water provider in Lyon is the city of, well, the, it's the metropole of Lyon. So, yeah. And the connectors, um, well, we call them APIs. So it's kind of, um, there it's, I, I don't know how to, I'm trying to think of uh, simple ways to explain it. Um, it's a way to connect, uh, the data that your provider already has and they call you. So pretty much you uh, give us the information that help us, uh, that help us um, connect to your uh, electricity provider, gas provider, water provider. And then all the information that they already have is just loaded into Ecolio, aggregated, and then showed on different boards. Um, and that's just uh, how we developed the, the app. Uh, does that answer the question? I, um, I guess if, if Peter, if you don't have, if, if you have any further questions, just let us know. Um, for my benefit, uh, Miriam, um, so what, what you're doing is a user who signs up to your service and uses the connectors is provided with lots of really detailed information about their uh, usage and the opportunity yes. to gain greater insights and their challenges and so on. Um, is that you? Uh, are you able to aggregate that data and, and gain um, insight into how people are using it and what value it's providing? You know, is it in general enabling people to cut down or or manage their usage better? So is it yeah, just for the question. individual, um, or is it, or is it we, is like the whole point of Ecolio is that we aggregate uh, the data because. 
uh, technically French uh, French people or well, people who live in France who uh, use uh, electricity, so basically pretty much everyone, uh, can already see uh, that um, hour by, by hour consumption of electricity, for example. You just have to go on the Enedis website, which is the French provider for electricity, uh, and then you can already follow that information. You can already see that. Uh, same thing for water, same thing for gas. What Ecolio does is putting all of that information into one place where you can see your energy consumption um, across uh, your different, the different types of energy that you use, water, gas, and electricity. So the whole point is to aggregate it. Um, the, yeah, basically, we see aggregated data uh, completely like made completely anonymous because it is uh, based on uh, cozy cloud which is a personal space uh, we do not see like i see my board i see nobody else's board we like individual users cannot have access to anyone else um, consumption uh, the only thing that we have, Metropole de Lyon, as the Metropole de Lyon, is a back office where we, where we can see the aggregated data. And as to answer the part where does it help reduce the consumption, there are studies that show that um, if you give people the opportunity to see how much they consume, mechanically they will consume less. Uh, if they can see a board telling them how much they consume um, without even making that much effort, they will reduce their usage uh, over over time because they can see how much they use. Um, it's it's not a high percentage. It's like six or seven percent, but it's okay. Um, but it's important to to. It's important to see how much you consume to realize what can you do on a daily basis that can help reduce it. Yes, I guess that's the big the big challenge, isn't it, really, that um, what you're doing is bringing the data, make it much more accessible. And it's really how that can be used both by the individual and, and more widely to help uh, us all be much more um, effective in our data use. Well, time is coming to an end. Um, sadly, this is a really interesting um, session with some excellent speakers and, and case studies. Uh, so I want to thank both Tuck and uh, Mariam for, um, for bringing to us uh, all these insights that you're able to provide to us. And thank all of you for joining this session. And I hope the rest of the day is going to go fantastically for all of us. Indeed. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.